Making condensers and water tanks, part one. This is like a miniature mass production job. I'm starting to make three condenser oil traps by cutting and turning the brass tubes. There are only going to be two water tanks because the Stuart Victoria engine already has one. Normally I would make these tanks using copper, but Blackgate's engineering were currently out of stock of the size of copper tubing that I needed. This brass tubing will be just as good for the job. Once the tanks and condensers are finished, they will be painted, and the tops of the condensers will be made from copper for a change to match the boilers, and this will be polished. Before I continue with this video, I'd like to show you this. It's a hole that was burnt in my bench by a man called Alexander Carnes, who came to stay with me for an alarming two weeks. We were testing a 504 boiler, which with the help of an old methylated spirit burner, was supplying the steam to a Stuart Twin Victoria steam engine that I sold recently, and Alex got carried away and kept topping up the burner. But he put too much in, and the meths came out of the burner and burnt the hole in the bench. Interestingly, at this point, the pressure increased considerably, with the sudden addition of a wood fire. Anyway, it's time to get on with the job. This is my smart and brown lathe, which is fitted with quite a large four-jaw self-centering chuck. Here I'm machining the tube for the condenser for the 504 boiler. And here I'm fitting a piece of the brass tubing in place to machine the ends and true them up. It's quite difficult to get this tubing to run concentrically. It was originally cut on the bandsaw at Blackgate's Engineering, so it isn't perfectly true to start with. But by the time I machine each end of it a couple of times, it should be more than true enough for the job it's going to have to do. This large four-jaw self-centering chuck is very good for this job, and once upon a time, when I used to make and sell these condensers, I machined up a piece of steel to go inside the tube to prevent the jaws from marking the tube on the outside. Normally, I use copper tubing for this job. I can't hold this part too tightly in the chuck. Really, I should use a special center on the outside. That would be a good idea, or even make a plug to fit inside it but by the time I've done that, I can have the job finished. There will, of course, be some chuck jaw marks on the brass, but this isn't an issue because before I paint them, I'll spin them up in the lathe and rub them down with some very coarse sandpaper as a key for the paint. Brass and copper don't like being painted, and you really do have to score the metal to make the paint stick. Over the years, I've had very good results doing it this way, so I will continue to do so. After using a file on the outside of the piece of tube and a deburning tool on the inside, the finish is very good. Machining 504 boiler water tank number two. Before anyone gets confused, I am actually making an extra water tank because the Stuart Victoria has its own tank. And this extra water tank is for another job altogether for another customer. It is really important to take fine cuts. If you take a massively heavy cut, then it's going to be disastrous. The piece of brass tube is firmly held in the chuck jaws, but not tightly held. If I tighten the chuck jaws, it will distort the tube very badly. I need the ends of the tube to be square, but I don't mean the shape of the tube to be square. And that would happen quite easily if I over tighten the chuck jaws. Now I have two pieces of brass tube, perfect to make two condensers. The next part of the job is a little bit more complicated. Once again, I've put a piece of brass tubing in the chuck and I'm squaring up the ends. In exactly the same way that you've just seen me do, and I do apologize for the repetition. I'm cleaning up the outside edge with a file and the inside edge with a deburring tool. And in no time at all, it's looking good. You may have noticed a felt tip pen mark on this particular tube. Here it is in the bandsaw. I'm shortening the 501 boiler condensers and water tank to match the boilers. I'm using my bandsaw very carefully. The first problem is the tube is rotating in the vice part of the bandsaw. I tightened this slightly, then limited the amount of weight that the blade was putting on the work with my hand. This worked out okay, and it ended up being quite a gentle operation. If I let go of the bandsaw arm, it would be really disastrous, but I didn't. 
The tube did move slightly, but I kept it well under control until the bandsaw had got all the way through. One down and three to go. This is about as near as I get to mass production. For the second tube, I tightened the vise slightly more than previously, and once again I'm limiting the amount of pressure that the blade puts on the work. To ease the monotony, I thought it would true up the first cut tube. As you can see, it's shorter, but I still need to take very fine cuts. Patience is a virtue, as the saying goes, and to be honest, this is quite relaxing to do. That is, until you overdo it and the tube jumps out of the chuck and becomes very mangled. So my advice is, just take it easy, remove a little bit at a time. Then you will end up with a nicely finished part instead of a piece of scrap metal. As before, I'm using the file on the outside and a deburring tool on the inside to remove the rough edges. Then I turned the brass tube around to machine the other end. Retrimming the initial cut end of the brass tube is a good idea because it makes the whole thing better. This is the other tube that I cut and it's now in position and once again fine cuts are the order of the day. And I cannot stress this too many times, that's why I keep repeating myself. When jobs are going well it is easy to get carried away and think oh I'll just take a little bit more off and then it all falls to pieces and usually it's the last operation that goes wrong. This is known as Sod's Law, Murphy's Law or the Chaos Theory. Just as an experiment I took a slightly deeper cut and I was lucky in this case. Don't forget these tubes are shorter than the originals. Had I have done this with one of the big longer tubes there would have been a problem. In no time at all I have what I need for the job. The left hand side is going to be a condenser with a brass top. The other condensers are going to have copper tops as I show here but they will be round. And now in this final clip, here are the parts that I've just made. I'm not entirely stupid, but to avoid confusion for any viewers, I've marked on the tanks a letter showing what they are. So I put a C on two of the tanks and a W on another two. And that is it for this episode. Time for me to go. I have things to do. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.